come with this press conference on behalf of the migrants who suggested to have a press conference to talk about um, the 30, 60 day ban uh, amongst other injustices that are happening inside the shelters. New York City migrants and, al and allies rally before Mayor Adams, state of the city. As you know, it's gonna happen tomorrow at Hostess Community College, which is 10 minutes away from here, uh, to declare that Mayor Adams seekers uh, Mayor Adams' asylum seeker state of emergency is destroying New York City. Then you have just one month to live on the set. Mm -hmm. Sometimes guys want to join the school to upload their, their English speaking, like me. So, but if you are one center, they give you only one month and you join the school. Before you upload your English speaking, you have to leave the center and go another side. I come from Senegal. Uh, I'm here since uh, August, so when you come here, first they give you us, they give us uh, only six, uh, three, three months to live on the center. So now, for now, they give us one, only one, one cent, one, one, one month. Okay. And you know, in America, if you come here, you ha you have to wait uh, one fifty months before find your asylum seeker before getting your, your, your paperwork in. And first, you have not to work. And the second, you have to leave the center one month. That's contractor, you see. Is it hard for you? It's very, no, me, for now, I, I am my apartment, for now. For now, I live in my apartment. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I speak about my friend. I just, I just live on the center four months. And for now, for now, I leave the sun. I don't, I don't live in the sun. And it is difficult. Yeah, for very. The but it's very difficult, very difficult. But at first, guys, don't you you come one country with you? You have to speak. You you don't know their language first. Second, we have not the same culture. You see, and sometimes <coughs> foods which you give us to eat it is not the same. Africa likes something with water, and they don't take uh, take take major. About, our, about us. So if I can speak English, friends, it will, it will, it will more, more, more easy for me, you see. And I'm executive director at Red de Pueblos Transnacionales. And um, Mayor Adams and Governor Hochul, I think, have turned this um, so-called migrant crisis into an excuse for not providing for people who are in vulnerable situations including New Yorkers who have been here for a long time and New Yorker and folks that are coming in, um, New Yorkers that are coming in now and need resources, um, both a, good, a place to stay um, that need food and meeting some of the most uh, basic things. Um, I think the so-called crisis is being used as this idea where they need to cut services, where also nonprofits that are are doing the work in the community are also um, having some budget slash from some of their grants for 15% for resources that are for the community being done by groups that are reaching the folks that need um, this help. Now I've, I've seen uh, plenty of uh, you know moments where um, migrants are being harassed by residents of the neighborhood. Um, are you aware of that? Um, I'm aware of it. We have not worked with anybody who has that happen to them. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know how they've been um, feeling uh, in, the, in the area where they've been living or sheltering. Um, we have so we've worked with um, we worked with uh, one woman in particular I can think of that she was you know one day to the other she was told that she needed to move she needs to move and take all of her things with her um, she had no mode of transportation she was living in Staten Island and she had to be moved to she was told she was going to be moved to Manhattan she did not have a suitcase she did not have all she had was some garbage bags that they gave her for her to store her things and then find her own way um, in the winter by herself to Manhattan. And she had to make it there before they closed the shelter that she was being moved to. So that already with the trauma that she's coming in with, she she filed uh, an asylee, um, asylum, for asylum status. So that on top of everything that she's already lived to get here, and just it just compounds one thing after the another. It really shows how little the government cares for 
women and for women in vulnerable situations that need help from them. Um, can you talk about, I, I know I was waiting for someone to get here, but mm -hmm. can you talk about kind of their experience and along the travel to get here and what they go through? Um, we work with indigenous immigrants. At Red Pueblos, we work with indigenous immigrants mainly. A lot of them are coming in from Guerrero. Um, a lot of them are going through, leaving because of violence, and the violence that they're living through in Mexico. Um, some of them spend a lot of money to be able to get here, to be able to get to a safe place, really because in the end this is a safe place for them. Um, I'm not aware of any that have experienced violence on the way here, but are running away from violence. And then coming here and living a different sort of violence, and also not finding that safe place that they were looking for and that they left. They were forced to leave home and family. Right. Uh, you might have mentioned this before, but what would you like to see at Eric Adams and Kathy Hoko uh, do to, uh, to kind of ease the, the, the shelter in here and, and the transition to permanent housing and, and working uh, you know, in jobs? Um, I think for one would be ending the contract with .go and Rx. Um, going through DSS and having immigrants find that home, expanding the amount of resources that are available to them, including mental health, including help to get from one place to the other, metro cards, right? You could give people metro cards to be able to get places. You can give them um, assistance in filling out applications, having language services available to them so that things could begin moving along and they can have, they can find um, housing or at least stay in a shelter much longer than one month or two. Mayor Adams Executive Order of Asylum Seekers State of Emergency has unleashed an expensive, inefficient and inhumane shelter system for vulnerable migrants. It has fostered a separate but unequal model, discriminating according to immigration status to receive social help. The asylum seeker state of emergency has amplified the mi migrant crisis rhetoric of the major's office and allowed for inhumane policies like the 30-60 day shelter limit to take place. The 30-60 day limit puts people and children arriving in New York City in a precarious position as they await for work permits and information about their immigration cases so they can secure jobs, housing, and schooling. This state of emergency is nothing but a tyrannical form of management that seeks to skip democratically established protocols. Instead of working with the established system of the Department of Homeless, Security, so Homeless Services and Social Services, which are less than perfect but abide by the right to shelter Cuyahan regulations by providing guidelines for safety and dignified shelters, and establishing clear procedures of accountability for shelters contractor, Mayor Adams continues to overstep the right to shelter regulations by removing any form of dignified care for the homeless via the humanitarian emergency response and relief centers known as HERCs. Under the state of emergency, the office of mayor forces unhoused migrants to seek shelters in HERCs, administered by the New York City Emergency Management and Health Hospitals. These emergency facilities do not follow the same protocols are given to private contractors like DOCO, Medrai, NICA, HANYC, and RX that have shown time again reckless behaviors and, un and house hundreds of people and families in congregated settings, many times in flimsy tents or hotels with faulty infrastructures that do not have the basic structural conditions to withstand the elements or provide basic weather refuge such as heating and cooling systems. According to New York City Comptroller 2023 and 2024 Fiscal Report, Hotel Association of the New York City Foundation received over 237 million and SLSCOLP, the same Texas company that built Trump walls, received 135 million to build flimsy tents. Meanwhile, migrants constantly show proof of the abusive treatment and lack of basic resources from the contracting management. The lack of basic resources like food, bathrooms, and sleeping beds has caused deteriorating health conditions, including malnutrition, in addition to the rapid spread of diseases like COVID, TB, and chickenpox. Regardless of the multiple evidence provided by migrants, Mayor Adams advances 500, 600, 500 
$165 million contracts with DACO for this fiscal year. And Governor Hochul promises $2.4 billion for Adams' manufacturer crisis. In addition to unstable housing and lack of basic resources, including food, children's, and hurts, can't keep attending the school. They are already enrolled because families are being shuffled from one herc to the next in different boroughs. The compounding metals, mental stress is also causing fights and even suicides inside the shelters. Most recently, the tragic loss of a three-month-old baby in Queens Herc. Clearly, Mayor Adams donors and friends based like Doggo and RXR are the main people benefiting from the state of emergency contracts and will continue mis to misuse Governor Hochul's 2.4 billion in fund instead of serving New York, New York City's vulnerable population. That is why we are against the 2.4 billion um, being offered by Governor Hochul for the migrants crisis. Instead, we demand for that money to go to social services, which will benefit um, both long-time New Yorkers, as well as our recent arrival neighbors. Even it is very difficult to live it. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to, 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 to go our, our country you now, because we, come, we, don't, we, don't, we don't come here to, to, to find a work or to find a money or, or we come here for money reason. You see, there are someone who come in the country which there are a war, they kill their father, their mother, maybe their family, and they come here. Maybe it is difficult, they can't return, you see. That's why they, they, they fight the, 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 the asylum city. Like me, I can't go. Even if it is difficult, I have to rest here, I have to, to, to live here, you see. Or if I live, if I have to live in United States, also I have not to go to my country. In Africa, in Central America, in places of war and famine, there's no food, there's no resources, there's no housing. You know, we could talk about like how in Palestine, one in, one in every four refugees in the world are Palestinian. And we could talk about how like it's being destroyed right now, right? So it's like here in the United States, we have an, a surplus of resources. And the resources that are being given to the most vulnerable are not adequate, are not humane. So here we're just playing around with resources and misusing money. Mayor Adams is guilty of sacrificing the lives and the well-being of his constituents in order to fund genocide and a brutal police force. At the cost of education and other so social services, the root cause of violence and poverty. This is indicative of a capitalist society where only capitalist classes' interests are represented while the people suffer. We must come together and hold Eric Adams accountable for the lies being lost in Palestine and the lies being lost as a result and the violence that his poor financial decisions, the way that impacts us and the way that impacts people overseas in the Middle East. Mayor Adams needs to lift the state of emergency because it's the, his crisis, his migratory crisis is just causing more um, anti-immigrant sentiments, more injustices than anything else and just misuses, misuses of funds. He could he simply end the decree and the executive order and get the migrants to go into DHS shelters, DSS shelters, where they could get more benefits humane treatment at the very least uh, and accountability um, instead of letting go of big contracts to DOCO and RX who are just mistreating um, the migrants. Um, Hall Street was the shelter that some of, my, of the migrants have been in and that is owned by RX who is a donor of Mayor Adams and hence the reason why these contracts as, are being given um, and hence the reason why we're against the 2.4 billion um, funding by Governor Hoku, because if you want to really serve migrants, if you want to really help New York, give those resources to public schools, to public parks, to social services, to help people find work or prepare for work instead of contractors who are not going to help the city of New York. I really, I really and truly believe that um, we, uh, we have to come together to hold these people accountable. And if there is not some kind of collective effort to make this happen, it will not happen. And I believe that we have the power, we have the integrity, and we have the humanity to see these changes come into fruition within our lifetime. Absolutely.
Yeah. Why do you think these politicians still support uh, Israel even after so many innocent de deaths? Well, I think that I think that there are a couple of reasons. I think the first is that um, I think that we as a people kind of make the mistake of trying to hold politicians accountable when the politicians and the decisions that politicians make um, are more so a consequence of uh, the capitalist class manipulating them to make the decisions that they do. Um, it's not that they shouldn't be hold, held accountable or that they are not sacrificing their humanity in order to make these kind of decisions. They absolutely are. But they are, rep they are not representing us at all, right? Eric Adams only, Eric Adams' concern is not the safety and the, the safety of his people. The, Eric Adams' concern is the safety of people with a lot of money, making sure that they can keep the amount of money that they have, that they can make more money. And in order to do this, there needs to be a certain amount of people living in poverty. There needs to be a certain amount of people dealing with the harsh realities of um, poverty. Israel is established, Zionism is rooted in um, US imperialism and imperialism, colonialism, genocide, slavery, like what's happening in the Congo, are all the foundation, are, are all the, is the foundation and historically have always been the foundation of capitalism and colonial settlism, settlerism. There cannot be, we cannot establish real power in the Middle East without it manifesting through genocide, without it manifesting through the slaughter of innocence. Absolutely. This is how it functions, this is how it works.